So Honkai Star Rail releases in about a week on April 26th. It's already available for pre-register and it will be available for pre-download three days before launch on the App Store and Epic Games Launcher, which is that's where I'm playing. Now, there's a lot of talk about this game. We're going to go over the overview of the game systems and really determine whether or not it's a turn-based Genshin Impact because that is the main categorization that I've seen so, so often. And I'll just say straight up, that is just a terrible description in my opinion. Let's get into it. So what genre even is this game? A lot of people, when we talk about gotcha games, we refer to so many different games. Oh, there's a new gotcha coming out. That doesn't really tell us a ton of information. Just to give you an example, Diablo Immortal, Raid Shadow Legends, Genshin Impact. These three are all gotcha games, but they're all very, very different games. Now, Honkai Star Rail here is way different than Genshin Impact. There's a few reasons for this, but I think the best description of what Honkai Star Rail is, is this is a gotcha turn-based JRPG. Now, JRPGs usually are distinct from RPGs. RPGs are things like perhaps the Elder Scrolls game where you have a live action combat system and your choices determine the narrative of the game. Now, in this game, you don't really have a ton of choices in terms of narrative. You just kind of follow along as well as your combat is turn-based and more strategic based. This is a very, very important distinction, even from Genshin Impact. Now let's address this idea that this game is a turn-based Genshin Impact. For one, when we consider Genshin Impact, what are the things that we think about? Well, I think about two things in realistic plus a third. The third one is that it's a gotcha game in that you kind of gamble loot box for your characters, for your weapons, etc. But that's not really unique to Genshin. Uh, in fact, none of this stuff is unique to Genshin. The two things that really stand out in my mind besides that one, the open world anime exploration game. And the second thing is the real time combat system and the ability to outplay your opponents in real time. These are two things that this game does not have, okay? This game does have an open world, but I would consider it a semi or fake or instance based open world, whatever classification you wanna run with. Because it's not really a huge open world game where you can explore any sort of area in the game and just move around and see all the different NPCs, etc. You have to actually go into certain areas and then within that small area, there are small explorations to be had and then you have to move to the next area, which makes this sort of a semi open world rather than a complete open world experience like Genshin Impact. Therefore, I don't think this game is very comparable to Genshin Impact in that way. However, there are a lot of other similar systems, and heck, there's a lot of similar systems in general uh, across all gacha games, right? Like gear-based uh, progression with RNG, there is the gacha system, obviously, there is the turn-based combat with skills, right? That is not unique to this game either. But to say that it's a turn-based Genshin is kind of, I guess you could say, uh, dismissive of what Genshin even is. Genshin one of the biggest things about Genshin is that it does have a real time combat system. That is one of the hallmark features of it. So to say it's turn-based Genshin is like not even Genshin at that point, you know what I mean? So that's that. Let's dive into the combat systems of this game. Now this game has a very, very interesting combat system because it's a lot different than other gacha games from what I've seen. Now. What you'll see here is I'll post a little screenshot of the kind of layout. You can see it behind me when we're playing, but I want to show you guys and, and target specific things. So in the bottom left, you'll see your character icons and you'll see little glowing circles next to them. That is indicative of their ultimate abilities. On the far right hand side, right hand corner, you're going to find two orbs, one being the basic attack and the other being the skill attack. Now, the basic attack is going to give you essentially one essence or one resource to be able to use on skill attacks. You could see that right next up to the bottom left of that basic orb. Your skill abilities are going to use your resource. Your ultimate ability is just castable at any point. This game is an initiative or speed based system. So the faster you go, you'll see in the turn order in the top left hand corner. And what you want to do is either use your basic or use your skill based on your resource available and all your characters share this resource. You kind of want to make sure that you're using the right ability at the right time. And as I mentioned, your ultimate 
is at any point you can use your ultimate and take a turn immediately, which is a very interesting strategic aspect of the game that really doesn't exist uh, in a lot of the gotcha games that I've played. So although it is turn-based and although it seems simplistic at surface level, oh, I have three abilities, one basic, two skills, maybe some passives, that's not really a ton, you actually do have a lot of options available to you due to the fact that your ultimate immediately gives you a turn. Now, what can you do in this game? What are the content systems or what content is in this game? Well, there's oftentimes a lot of shared content across a lot of different gacha games, uh, specifically turn-based gacha games, where you're gonna have standard dungeon farming or rather gear farming. You're gonna have upgrade farming. You're going to have sort of a rogue light feature where you're going to be crawling through dungeons or stages and getting small upgrades for your teams and then continuing past those stages to see if you can beat it. You're gonna have tower type game modes. But I think the most important feature of this game and something that a lot of people like is the semi-open world. And this is going to be your standard game mode that you're going to be playing most often. There are going to be those instances and you're going to walk around those instances and find enemies walking around. If they come near you, they will engage in combat with you and enter into the turn-based system. Outside of that, you can explore the world, find you know summons, upgrade materials, etc but that is going to be the majority of the gameplay early, early on. And then as you approach the end game, you're going to unlock more of those sort of tower type systems, etc., in the game. One important thing to know is that this is a purely PVE based game so far. We will see in the future if they add more competitive PVP type modes, but until then, it's just PVE. Lastly, the gotcha system. I feel like it's hard to talk about Honkai Star Rail without talking about their gotcha system. First off, their pity amount is uh, the exact same as Genshin Impact, more than Tower of Fantasy, which is 90 summons for the pity. Your character banners are going to have a 50-50 shot at receiving the character that you want off the banner, and your light cone or your weapon banners or your artifact banners, etc., those ones seem to be a 100% chance if you guys do summon that um, you need, you know, legendary or SSR, etc., so when you're looking for these characters, keep in mind that, you know, you do have to coin flip when you want that character. And on top of that, in this game, it seems to be quite difficult to acquire summons. So I wouldn't be too, too, um, I guess you could say, excited about summoning in this game because it seems like it's going to be few and far between. So if you're free to play, just keep that in mind, okay? But overall, the gotcha system seems okay. It's not the worst I've seen by far, but it's also not the best I've seen by far. So relatively okay and something that uh, I'm looking forward to myself. So that's going to wrap up sort of the content systems, the combat systems, the overall arching kind of idea of this game, the genre, etc. Hopefully this answers some of your questions that you might have had and gives you just a brief overview of the game systems. Uh, I would do a review, but I feel like there's a lot of people um, that are doing reviews. I still might, um, but I prefer to just get the game on my hands rather than just going off my brief experience uh, in some of the previous testing that I've done. Uh, but I'm pretty excited about it. Hopefully you are as well. Keep in mind that I will leave a link to the pre-registration in the description down below if you guys want to check it out. You can download it again early three days before and be sure you do so because I'm not sure if this game is going to give you the pre-registration rewards if you don't pre-register like some other games do. Thanks for watching and if you like Haunted Christ Rail content, be sure to sub because I will see you all tomorrow for another video.